All right, I wanted to make a quick video on the charging system on these 24 valve second gen uh, Rams. There seems to be a lot of misconceptions out there or just misinformation on how these systems work. And so I wanted to try to streamline it for other people um, because the forums will lead you down a rabbit hole of hell. So let's just talk with the easy stuff. So this is obviously the alternator. Um, but everyone will ask you, well, have you replaced the voltage regulator? The moment someone tells you that on one of these cars, or really on any Chrysler vehicle between 88 and present day, you can immediately stop paying attention to this individual because they don't know a damn thing about how Chrysler uh, electrical systems work. Chrysler's haven't had voltage regulators in years. Um, they're actually regulated through the PCM. So let me show you where the PCM is located. PCM is located right there. So this is on your passenger side firewall, something that you'll want to check immediately. That little wire right there is a ground wire. And so I'm gonna trace that, and it comes up to here where it's secured to the cab. So there's uh, ground number one that I wanna make sure is working fine, because if you're having some sort of no charge or overcharge, we need to check the grounds. This truck was having an overcharge situation, and I really wanted to talk about what happened because so many people would diagnose it incorrectly. So we've got that ground, we know that for a fact. There is a two wire plug that is this wire that clips into the back of the alternator along with one single uh, eyelet wire that is actually the power wire that starts charging this, or this battery. So the ECU, or I'm sorry, a PCM, it's not an ECU, the PCM on the firewall essentially is what's going to tell the alternator how much charge it needs. This truck was charging at 16.5 volts. Uh, that will kill your batteries. Uh, plot twist already did. Um, it'll completely obliterate your batteries, along with the possibility of screwing up with your blower motor inside, the cab lights. It's just a bad thing. You don't want an overcharge situation. When it was overcharging, I was pretty sure that it was a ground problem somewhere, thinking we had a bad ground, and the PCM was reading that and trying to just blow voltage through. I'm going to actually tell you what it was, because it's actually fairly more common in cars than people really believe, um, and so we'll get into that. Here's the deal. What it actually ended up being is there are... Two screws on the back of this alternator. Those screws you can use to check um, essentially how the diodes are working in the alternator. The diodes are what control how the alternator is generating its voltage. My diodes stopped working. What they did is they welded themselves wide open and so even though the ECU was only commanding a certain amount of voltage, the alternator was just going to pump it in as much as it could, as fast as it could. I also want to talk about something else that people don't talk about. So I could have replaced that alternator, just replace it, put it back together. Guess what? It's overcharging. Why is it overcharging? It's got a brand new battery. I don't get it. These trucks are highly sensitive to the battery connections um, because this is how this system works. You've got the, the PCM which is driving the alternator. The alternator charges this battery first and then through this cable goes to your driver's side battery. The problem is the PCM is reading that battery. That battery underneath of it has what's called a battery temperature sensor. So if the system's working correctly and the battery gets to a certain degree, the uh, PCM reads uh, powertrain control module reads that it is too hot and it'll just shut the system down. Mine ended up doing that because it was recognizing that there were some problems going on. Here was the problem. On top of my diodes being bad, what happened was the diode stuck, overcharged the batteries, and then broke the cells in that battery. So what happened is the PCM is reading this battery the entire time and is going, oh, it doesn't have enough charge. Let's keep, keep, keep giving it as much charge as we possibly can. What it does is this battery was already, you know, dead on arrival with a broken cell, but it cooked that battery because it's pumping, you know, 136 amps 
at 16 volts into this battery trying to get that power to go across the cable to the other battery. The reason why I tell you this is so many people will replace that alternator and then they'll you know, sit back and they'll say it's still overcharging and someone will be like, obviously it's a ground problem. You need to check all your grounds and so you need to go and crawl under it. You don't need to crawl under the truck. If that ground is good, if that ground on that battery is good, which is next to the air filter box, and this ground, which is right here, runs right there, you're good. Those three grounds are good for the system. Um, what it is, is you've got broken cells, and you've got a PCM that's reading these batteries as not having the proper charge, and is then trying to force it through. Um, and so that's, you know, it's one of those things, it's a nightmare when it happens. So I just wanted to outline it because a lot of people send you all over the world for this. Um, what I personally did with this truck is I didn't trust the batteries because I knew I had run 16 volts into them for a, a quality bit of time. So I pulled the batteries, I pulled the alternator off, and then I hit all the parts stores. Um, the alternator tested bad. The diodes on the machine proved to be faulty. Um, then I took the batteries in. The batteries were load tested. They failed that miserably and they determined that both of them had dead cells in them. So replaced those and replaced the alternator, hit the key, fired up, everything's charging as it needs to be. And I have no additional problems. So remember, also I do want to talk about this because this is when it was kind of eye-opening. There is this wire right here. You can tell it because there's two wires in one. It's always a, like the bat signal of Chrysler. For some reason, they can't afford to buy the quality electrical connectors, so they'll just take and run two wires into one. I need to redo this connector. I know that. It had significant amount of corrosion. Um, I had been thinking that I had been having a uh, ground problem because I had CCD on my overhead screen, um, and I had checked everything in the cab and was going to start checking outside found this thing had a ton of corrosion on it used the trick of one cup hot water one cup uh, baking soda um, completely was able to get all the corrosion off you can see like the terminals and everything are much nicer than they've ever been um, and now I don't have the CCD on the overhead so I'm pretty sure I found my problem right there uh, again checked all the grounds all the grounds are good systems charging so just remember um, if you're having an overcharge and you take in the alternator and the alternator it proves to be good and there's no problem there and they say oh the alternator is fine go test these batteries make sure that you don't have a dead cell that's tricking that computer into just overcharging in the hopes of getting it to actually hold the charge it needs to be so i appreciate you guys hope you guys got a little insight talk to you soon